Hi there! In this lesson, we continue the customization process of the working drawings. We will start by adding 2D shapes to our drawings. The first of our menu is the rectangular shape. So click on the icon, and then we just need a couple of clicks on the workspace. From the properties panel, we can change the alignment by clicking this button. Then, of course, we can edit the dimensions from here. And with this function, I can also add an internal all to this shape. And here I should insert the distance value from the edge, for example, one meter. Then I can have a rounded edge instead of vertex, and I can also change the curvature value. As seen in the previous lesson, from this box I can change the scaling factor, but also the visibility scale. By clicking this function on the toolbar, I can edit the contour line of the shape. So I can insert some new vertex, but also converting the segment into an arc. Now let's delete this object and insert a new shape. In order to insert the circular shape, I will need a first click for the center of the object and a second click to define the radius. But of course also here I can change the dimension from the properties panel. Again here I can add an all at a certain distance from the edge. Now as we already know all the other functions, I can delete this object and insert the next one. Even from the elliptical shape, I just need a couple of clicks on the workspace. Again I can change the axis dimension, and I can add an internal aperture. The next object in our menu is the polygonal shape. Obviously, before inserting the shape, we need to define the number of segments. So if I want an hexagon, I just have to click here and write down 6. Here there are all the dimensions of the shape. And then we can apply the same process also for the triangle or for the generic shape. Now this function will allow me to insert a linear pattern that I will choose from the beam object library. So for example, from this folder, I can choose this insulation typology. Here we have the graphic symbols that I can use to identify the element interruption. And at the end of the menu, we will have the simple and always useful arrow. Also the arrow shapes can be edited as a polyline, and so for example I can insert nodes and change the segment into arc. The next category of the menu is related to the text and the shapes connected. So for example, the first icon will allow me to insert a simple text. So with the first click on the workspace, I will insert the anchor point of the text, then with the second click I will define the dimension, and then I will have this window in which to insert the text itself. With the upper left icons, I can insert or delete new paragraph. And then of course from here I can customize the font, so I can change the dimension, the color and so on. And from this icon I can also add some symbols. Then with this function, I can apply the same procedures as the normal text, but in this case I will dislocate the text connected to an object. Then we have the various balloon shape, so for example we can insert a rectangular one by clicking in this icon, then a first click on the working drawing to insert the anchor point, and with the second click we define the dimension of the box. Again in this window we can edit the text and eventually the font, and then just click apply. With the same procedure we can also insert other balloon shapes, like for example the elliptical. All this balloon shape will share the same properties toolbox, in which we can edit the alignment, the text, the geometry, the scaling factor and so on. And now let's go to the next category of the menu. Here we have the room label, and we just need one click inside our closed room to insert these informations. Then select the label, and click on this button, and from this window we can edit the text, but also delete or add a new paragraph. For example, in this case I want to delete this. And add a new paragraph with the volume information. And from the geometry list of the variables, I will choose the volume option. And from here I will add the measurement unit. Now let's suppose I want to apply this label to all my rooms. 
so I just need to click in the Copy Properties button and then click to the Label All button. Next on the menu we have the door labels, so select the option, click a first time on the door and a second time to fix the position of the label box. Again with the Edit button I can modify the text and eventually add some variables. From the Properties panel I can choose whether if I want a reference point or a plain label. And from here I can also change the style and the dimension of the symbols. By using this function, I can apply labels also over the windows. And I can do the same for the vertical envelopes, and even for the 3D object present in my working drawing. And all this label typology share exactly the same properties panel. Here we have the orientation symbols, and to insert it I just need a click on my working drawings. And from the properties panel I can change the style of the symbol. From this last part of the menu we can choose among various legends typology, like the first one which is the zone 1 legend with all the different color related to the areas of the building, the room legend in which the different color are related to each room. From the properties panel we can choose if we want to visualize all the rooms of the building or only the ones related to this level. We can change the dimension of this table and also which column we want to visualize. Now let's see how to customize also the section. Also here we can choose among different style of representation, having a drawing with color in black and white, or eventually from the properties box we can enable the material color and the shadowing effect. And for the shadow we can change the intensity and the inclination angle. So let's come back to the menu and choose some 2D graphics element. For example the elevation function, so I just need to click on the section and I will get the information about the elevation in that point. Of course I can use the measurement function, which works exactly like for the floor plan. But let's suppose I need to edit my model, in this case I just need to click in this button in order to access the sectioned view of the model, and from here it is possible to select and edit all the elements in this model. For example, I can modify the dimension of this door and then by confirm and click this button, all my modification will be visible on the original section. Of course I can apply the same procedures also for the other drawings. Now that we have completed our drawing models, let's compose our working drawings. So I will select this node from the navigator tree, then right mouse click and select add new. Now in this wizard window we can select the page format from here, for example H0, we can choose the orientation, vertical or horizontal, and here we have a long list of title blocks. We can also change the position. Now by clicking OK, we will have a white workspace in which to insert our working drawings. From the properties panel we can change some characteristics, for example we can change the title, we can choose a different format of page, we can change the title blocks typology. From the geometry box we can change the properties of the merging, for example by having more space on the sides, or adding a binding on the left side. We can change the color of the squaring, the style and thickness of the line. And from the variables box I can change all the information present on the title block. Now in order to insert my drawing model I just need the drag and drops over my working drawings. So for example select the floor plan from the navigator tree and release it here in my workspace. I do the same for the other floor levels, for all my sections and for the elevation views as well. We can actually drop whatever we made before. So I can insert the renders or even the tables with some information. And now I have my completed working drawings which I probably will need to export, so click on the file tab and then from the menu the exportation option. For this example I will export in the XFDWG format file, so here insert the name and eventually the file format. From the left menu we can also choose the printing options, so we will have this preview windows, also here from the properties panel we can change the alignment or eventually the merging style. From the options box we can change the printing typology and the quality of the printing. And then I just need to click this button 
in order to print my document. So this is my final result, and from here I can select my printing format. So for example I can have a Microsoft Word or a PDF file. Or eventually I can choose a DWF format.